Amen. Now I want you to turn with me in your Bibles this morning, please, to the second book of Kings. And we're in 2 Kings this morning, chapter 7. The second book of Kings. And we're in chapter 7, please. And we're commencing to read from verse 1. 2 Kings, chapter 7. And we're reading from verse 1. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord, thus saith the Lord. Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. And there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate, and they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come, and let us fall into the hosts of the Syrians, and if they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo! The king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore, they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carried thence silver and gold and raiment, and went and hid it, and came again, and entered into another tent, and carried thence also, and went and hid it. Then they said one to another, We do not well. This day is a day of good tidings, and we hold our peace. And if we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come, that we may go and tell the king's household. So they came and called unto the porter of the city, and they told him, saying, We came to the camp of the Syrians, and behold, there was no man there, neither voice of man, but horses tied and asses tied, and the tents as they were. And he called the porters, and they told it to the king's house within. And we know that the Lord will add the blessing to the reading of His own precious truth. It was well on, late on, on a Saturday evening, when a young preacher was walking down an isolated country road. And at the end of that isolated country road, there was a little enclosed churchyard. The young preacher walked down this isolated country road as he was contemplating much on the morning sermon that he would preach the next morning. The sermon weighed very heavy on his heart because the text that he was to preach was, the day of his wrath has come. And as he walked down this isolated country road, 
turning over in his mind and praying much, he came to the gate of this little enclosed churchyard. He decided to enter in, and his meditations were disturbed by the sounds of a, of a young lady crying. He followed the sounds. He found a young lady kneeling at a grave with just a little humble bunch of daffodils and primroses and placing them upon that grave. The young preacher could tell that it was the grave of a young child. I'll tell you something now, there's nothing can break even the hardest of hearts more than when you stand at the grave of a little child. The woman wept uncontrollably. The young preacher got on his knees beside her and she began to tell the story. Our wee boy of six and three months one day got out of the house unknown to her knowledge. Went across the yard where there was farm hands working and made his way into the stable where there was two or three horses. We lad went in. One of the horses flared up. The wee one was killed. As she told her story that Saturday evening, she looked up into the young preacher's face and she said, this is what really breaks my heart. This is what really drives the dagger into my grief. And the young preacher said, what is it, dear? None of them, she said. None of them working out in the farmyard cared enough to bring him back to me. None of them cared enough. No one cared enough to stop the young lad from going in. And that's why I find myself here at his grave. No one cared enough to stop him. No one cared enough to bring him back to me. How tragic are those words, child of God. No one cared enough. Think of that young mother's words this morning. Tell me this, do they pierce your heart? No one cared enough Imagine your home was on fire, you were trapped, and no one cared enough to raise the alarm. Imagine you're in trouble away out there in the sea, and no one cared enough to, to raise the alarm. Listen to me, no one cared enough.
Child of God, listen to me. How many's in the fires of hell today because no one cared enough? No one cared enough. That young preacher left the cemetery. After he prayed with that young heartbroken mother, he left the cemetery and God spoke to his heart concerning the message. And the Lord stamped on his heart this text, Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. No one cared enough. Child of God, it'll be a tragic story if someone, man or woman, was lost because you and because me did not care enough to tell them about Jesus and His love. What a tragic story it would be child of God this morning, if someone that we loved and someone that we cared for and someone that we cherished was lost and we failed to tell them, we failed to warn them about their need. Child of God, wouldn't it be tragic if some of our loved ones this morning would one day lift their eyes in hell and say, no one told me that Christ died for me. A tragic story. A tragic story. Yet, my dear child of God, this draws me to my text upon which the Lord has laid upon my heart. I was going to come with a different message. On Tuesday, the Lord was having none of it because He brought me to this text. And I'll tell you where you'll find it. You'll find it in verse 9. Verse 9. Then they said one to another, We do not well. This is a day of good tidings. And we hold our peace. I want you to notice here we have four leprous men. And God wants us to watch these four leprous men because there's a tremendous lesson for all of us that's found in these four leprous men. When you watch these four leprous men, first and foremost, they realize the facts. They said in verse 9 that this day is a day of good tidings. But there's four things, Taylor, sorry, three things this morning that these four leprous men begin to realize. First of all, they began to realize their plight. Notice where they are. They're outside the gate. There was four leprous men, verse 3, at the entering in of the gate, and they said one to another, Why sit we here till we die? Here's four hopeless cases. Men with no hope. Men perishing, they're dying in their leprosy. And leprosy in Bible times, child of God, was the cancer of today. And we see them in verse 3, and they're there without hope. They're there and they're perishing. And you know something, my friend? What we see here are three, sorry, four hopeless cases. Where they are, what they are. And as I look at these four leprous men, do you know who I see there? I see you, unsaved friend. 
Unsaved man this morning. Unsaved woman this morning. In verse 3, I see you sitting there. And in this meeting, if you're not saved, and if you're not trusting Christ as your Savior, I want you to know, and I say this with all the love in my heart, let me say something to you, my unsaved friend, you're a hopeless case in the light of eternity. An unsaved man or unsaved woman, my friend, it's time to realize the facts this morning. You're perishing. Friend, tonight, this morning, you're in your sin. And my friend, this morning, listen to me, unsaved friend. Do you realize this morning your sin is dragging you into the eternal flames of hell? It's time, man. It's time, woman, you realize the facts. Listen to what listen to what they say. Why sit we here till we die? Unsafe man, why do you sit in your sin till you die for? Friend, death could come at any moment. These four leprous men knew that death was coming. And they knew that if they stayed where they were, they would perish. Friend, let me tell you. These four leprous men, they realized the facts this morning. They realized they were hopeless. They realized they were perishing. Unsaved friend, I pray to God you realize the facts. And I asked you a wee question. Now, I'm your friend. Why sit you in your sin this morning until you die? You're lost. My friend, unless you trust Christ as your Savior, and unless your sins have been forgiven, listen this morning. There's no easy way in saying this. Listen, it's not an easy thing to stand up here and tell you the truth. But I have to be faithful. Do you know the way I warn you is because I care for you. My dear unsaved man this morning, my dear unsaved woman, Right now, right now, you are a hopeless case in the light of God's great eternity. Right now, you're on the broad road that's leading you to the caverns of the doomed and the damned. Why sit you the way you are this morning? Knowing that one day you'll perish. Knowing that one day death will come. And you're not ready. My dear unsafe friend, listen to me. You need to wake up this morning and realize the facts. You're perishing. Why sit we here until we die? If there's ever a time to be saved, my unsaved friend, now's the time. Now's the time to trust Christ as your Savior. Because one day death will come. And mind you, it may come sooner rather than later. And that's why I want to take a wee moment with you unsafe folk, and can I invite you to come to the Savior this morning? He's here with arms outstretched. He died on Calvary's cross. He bore your sin. He bore the wrath of God. My dear unsafe friend, will you not come to the blessed Savior? Listen to me. 
He died to save you. He died to save you. And friend, you need to realize that you're perishing this morning. The devil has blinded you long enough. Can I urge you, come this morning and trust the Savior. Don't you leave it one day longer. This may be the last opportunity for some man or some woman. Jesus tenderly calls. They realize the fact of their plight. But then suddenly they realize the, the fact of their privilege. Verse 6, God done something wonderfully for these perishing men. Verse 6, it says there, The Lord made the host of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians, the, Egypt, uh, the Egyptians to come upon us. There wasn't a word. There wasn't one. But God made them hear something that drove them away. Here was the privilege for these four leprous men. God provided the way into the city. God clears the way for these perishing men to enter. God cleared the way to make it easy. You know, God cleared the way for me six months before I was saved. I remember the night sitting in Avon Corns and God touched my heart and took all the worldly pleasures of sin away. And on the day of I heard his voice, God made it clear for me to come. But my friend, God made the way for you through the death of his son on the cross. Sinner friend, this morning you're privileged because God has opened the way for you to come and to be saved. But then we see their possession, verse 8, and when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent, and they did eat and drink, and carried then silver and gold and raiment, and they went and hid it, and came again, and entered into another tent, and carried thence also, and went and hid it. Here we have these four leprous perishing men. They come into the city, and child of God noticed they were filled with their findings. They were satisfied with the spoil. They were saved and satisfied. Everything, everything that they needed was inside the city. Verse 3, we've got them entering in, going in, and they went in. And listen, child of God, do you remember the day we came to Christ? We found everything that we long for in Christ. Thank God everything that we possess is in Christ this morning. We're blessed, child of God, with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. And they, this, this, these perishing lepers, they, 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 they see that this is the day of good tidings. Boys, I'll tell you something now. Do you ever switch on the news at tea time? And on by Jimmy DeLargy comes on the screen. Boy, on by depresses me. Isn't it funny how he always... Pops up when you're, when you're at your dinner. He soon puts you off your dinner. The one thing. Heaven's doom and gloom, isn't it? Financial downturn. Business is closing. Heaven's go I say, Tracy, take that dinner. I can't listen to no more of this. But I want you to know something this morning, child of God. Listen to me. No matter about the social, no matter about the financial, listen. The spiritual day is, this is a day of good news. It's the day of good tidings. Thank God God's still on the throne. I'll tell you again, just in case you missed it. God's still in the throne. It's still the day of grace. It's still the day of opportunity. It's still the day where God wants to move in this day, in this generation, no matter about the news. It's the day of great tidings, child of God. It's the day of great tidings. 
Ah, but they not only realize their facts, they recognize their fault. We do not well, for this day is the day of good tidings, and we hold our peace. What was, what was their, their fault? They hid what they found. They hid what they found. These four leprous men, child of God, done something that was wrong. They hid the blessing that they possess. We do not well. This day is a day of good tidings. Ah, but, ah, but we hold our peace. Tell me something, child of God, this morning. Listen to me. Are you holding your peace this morning? The gospel is not someone to be stored. The gospel is someone to be shared. Are you holding your peace this morning, child of God? I'll challenge you now. Let, let the Lord challenge you. When was the last time you invited someone to a gospel service? Hmm? When was the last time you, st you handed someone a, a gospel tract? When was the last time you shared with someone about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? Oh, child of God, we're all guilty, aren't we? We're all guilty. There's a world outside these four walls and they're perishing. And we hold our peace. Have you told someone about Jesus, the mighty to save? Have you shared with someone lately, child of God, about their need of the Savior? Let me draw it closer to you. Let me make it more real to you. You can't tell them when they're lying in the coffin. And there's no point in being concerned when you're carrying them on your shoulder. We need to be telling them now. Thank God, child of God, we have got the soul-saving, life-changing message of the gospel. But listen to what the Apostle Paul says. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them who? To them that are lost. Because, listen, child of God, it is too late when they're gone. These four leprous men they recognize their fault. Oh, child of God. Let's tell them. Let's tell them of Jesus the mighty to save. Let's tell them in these days that there's a Savior from all sin if they only let him in. And to their heart, he there will reign. If they were only but trusted. Oh, friend, now, child of God, do you realize your fault? Do you recognize your fault this morning? We're holding our peace. There's a world out there. There's a community out there. And listen, they're perishing. Maybe you're here with a sister. Maybe you're here with a husband. Maybe you're here with a wife. Maybe you're here and they're, and they're unsaved this morning. And your children. And you're holding your peace.
But listen to me. Now's your opportunity to act. Now's your opportunity to change. There's a mission coming, child of God. And now is the time to get out there. Now is the time to seek them. Now is the time to win them. Now is not the time to hold your peace. We do not well. We hold our peace. Ah, but listen, they respond in fear. Look at verse 9. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. I tell you what. They feared what might happen if they didn't tell anybody. What they're saying is, hey, listen, boys, what we're doing here is not right. What we're doing is not right. We have all this, and we're telling nobody it's not right. And say, of God, listen to me. It's not right that we hold on to the gospel to ourselves. And they respond in fear because they're afraid of what mischief may come. We, as God's people, listen to me, we as God's people need to take the leaf out of the four leprous men's book. We will give an account of how we lived for God when we come to the judgment seat of Christ. We will give an account of how we lived our lives for him. And let me tell you someone, child of God, that ought to scare you because it certainly scares me. I'll not be judged, we'll not be judged, child of God, at the judgment seat of Christ because of our sins. Thank God, past, present, and future sins are all underneath the blood. But we will be judged on our service, and that frightens me. It's our calling, child of God. Not my calling only, but it's your calling. It's our calling to go out and to tell a community that the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. What better news have we today than that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners? Let's go out. Let's tell others. Let's invite others. You want nobody in hell to say about you or to say about me. He or she didn't care enough to tell him. Let's sow the seed. Let's get about the master's business and tell others of our blessed Savior as we venture in to this mission. May God bless his word to our hearts for his name's sake. 123, please. One, two, three in the red hymn book. 123. No, sorry, sorry. 463. 463. Just an age thing. 463. Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontide as the dewy eve, waiting for the harvest and the time of reaping. We shall come rejoicing bringing in the sheep.